today. I am will discuss one subject called Padiga Randa Subject. <coughs> Padiga Randa Subject of Ubri Anansa. What is the meaning of Padiga Randa Subject? One who has a single easily night. We want to have a single easily night. We want? <laughs> okay, we will discuss about this. <laughs> Maybe Buddha was, at the time Buddha was really in Cheta when we are at Saudi. He said this to me. Hmm? There are many misunderstandings about this to me. So because of this reason, I want to explain it, especially to students. Adida nanagamiya nabadi dinke anagada. Yada dida bhi nanda abadensa anagada. This is funny. Adida nanagamiya. One should not uh, sorry, sorry, I mean we had what mm. me mm. one should not one should not follow Abda <coughs> Abda the past. Why? The past had been left behind. One should not. One should not make uh, hopes up on the future. Hmm? One should not create hopes up on the future because future is future had not yet reached. So this is the meaning of this sentence. One should not follow Abda <coughs> the past. So they translate, one should not contemplate the past. Not true. What is the meaning? Adida nana gamiya di tana de dihi nanu kichiya. You should not follow Abda the past with craving in wrong view. What is the meaning? So Buddha explained the meaning of this sedenza. How does a bhikkhu does not follow the abda, follow abda the past? He had delay, he had delay. He had delayed there, thinking, I had such a such material for in the past, such feelings. I had such feeling in the past. I had such perception in the past. <coughs> I had such such formations in the past. I had such consciousness in the past. In this way, if we have delay or craving in wrong view, then this is called he is following after the past. So if you have attachment or craving to the past by agreements, then you have attachment if you and you you are following after the past. We can say you are following after the past. Past aggregates. So <coughs> past aggregates are <coughs> already left behind. Already passed away. Hmm? So you should not have delight in the past aggregates. You shouldn't have craving for the past aggregates. 
not to have craving, not to have delight in the first aggregates how you should try. I want to explain later. Hmm? In the same way, <coughs> how you sh hmm? how you expect future hopes for the future aggregates. Hmm? How you expect hopes hmm? for the future aggregates. One have delight in the future aggregates. Thinking, may I have such material for material form in the future? May I have such feeling in the future? May I ha have such uh, such perception in the future? May I have such formations in the future? May I have such consciousness in the future? In this way, if you have expanding for what delight for the future aggregates, then this is we can say you are expanding for future. You have a lot of hopes for future aggregates. So if you have delight for future existence, that delight is another word, craving or attachment with wrong view. How craving and wrong view rise? If you perceive hmm, future aggregates as I hmm, or as my, then this is this is craving and wrong view. <coughs> if you have attachment for future aggregates, uh, I will be may I be such and such person in the future existence. May I be a woman, such and such woman. May I be a beku, may I be a bekuni. Hmm? In this way, if you have expectations or attachment to future aggregates, then we can say do you are expecting for future. So you should not expect for future, not to expect for future how you should contemplate. I will explain later. Huh? Another stanza there is Picho Bane Cha Yodama Tata Tata Vipasati Asan Hira Asan Koban Tan Vida Manu Bihaye Picho Bane Cha Yodama Present Pike Grigas. Hmm? Present Pike Grigas, there are present Pike Grigas. These Pike Grigas you must contemplate. Nature, Toka, eh? Ananda, etc. Where? Everywhere. Or every mind moment, every material moment. Eh? Why you are contemplating these five aggregates as Nature, Toka, Ananda, etc.? You should try to see according to their own situation. What is situation? <coughs> I had already explained. Hmm? Materiality rise as a club. In each club, if you analyze at least there are eight types of materiality, art element, water element, fire element, wind element, color, order, flavor, nutrient, depth, etc. So materiality rise as a group. This is called Dhamma Pongcha. Dhamma Pongcha means the Dhammas arise not single, as a group only. In the same way, mentality also arise as a group, <coughs> not single, not one by one. Moment by moment, mentalities may be rise, but in each mind moment, at least there must be eight days of mental factors. In some cases, such as Pajana Dhamma, there are 34 mental factors. When you are contemplating this Nama Dhamma, you should try to see this ultimate mentalities as a group. You should not contemplate there only one. Because if there are eight mental factors, you should try these eight mental factors as Nichatruka Nada. 
If they are at the level of the Vedas in each one moment, then you should contemplate them as Anicca Dukkha Ananda altogether. But you can separately, one by one, also you can contemplate, but you must try up to the level of the Vedas, hmm? or eight Vedas, etc. So, <coughs> when you are contemplating in this way, that contemplation is called inside knowledge, we person. Again, you must also contemplate that we person inside as Anicca Dukkha Ananda. So, here are five aggregates. These five aggregates you must contemplate as Anicca Dukkha Ananda. This is one type of inside knowledge. That inside knowledge, again, you must contemplate as Nicca Dukkha Nata. This is called Pati Vipassana. <coughs> what is the meaning? The meaning means here, there are five aggregates, material, the aggregate of materiality, the aggregate of feeling, perception, formations, and consciousness. One by one, you can contemplate. For example, if you contemplate materiality aggregate as Nicca, then that Nature inside knowledge also you must contemplate again as nature or dogma and nada, etc. In this way, you must do both. Why? Sometimes some meditators, when they are contemplating as nature or dogma or nada, sometimes their insight become very sharp. They can contemplate very easily whether this is past or present or future. Huh? In Daniel, it's done no problem. They can easily contemplate. They are which at the time is very sharp. They are inside at the time very sharp, deep, profound. So at the time they have a lot of attachment, they are inside. Ah, oh, today very good. I can contemplate. Oh, very good. Today concentration very good. I can concentrate well. Ah, oh, today not good. Today not good. <laughs> so if the, today is very good, they have attachment to that knowledge, huh? mm -hmm. or do that concentration, or do that insight. So that, to remove that attachment, you must also contemplate that insight as a nature or dukkha or another. If you contemplate as a nature, that nature insight, knowledge, can just try <coughs> temporarily, hmm? can just try the perception of I. This is conceit, I, I, in this way, yeah? you do <laughs> like that. This conceit, this nature knowledge can remove. Why? Every mentality, every mentality, every aggregate, hmm? internal or external, when he, he is contemplated as nature, as soon as they rise, they pass away very, very quickly. So they, he contemplate as then as nature. When he is contemplated as nature, as soon as they arise, they pass away quickly. He cannot see any eye. Do you see? No, cannot see eye at that time. So perception of eye disappear because of that nature inside knowledge, nature nubhasana. In the same way, these formations, eh, these five aggregates, as well as inside knowledge, eh, if you contemplate them as dukkha, why? They are always oppressed by rising and passing away, so they are dukkha. If you contemplate them as dukkha, then that dukkha inside knowledge can destroy temporarily the perception of mind. Oh, this is my ruba, this is my feeling, this is my perception, this is my information, this is my consciousness. This perception disappears. Why? You cannot see there is mind. Hmm? As soon as they rise, they are passed away, and they are always uh, oppressed by rising and passing away. So because of this reason, you cannot see mind. Hmm? So if there is no eye, there will be no mind. Hmm? Because all are impermanent. In the same way, if you contemplate these five aggregates as well as inside knowledge as another, no self, then you cannot see self, because in these five aggregates as well as in this inside knowledge, you cannot see any 
per minute substance. As soon as they rise, they are always passing away. There is no per minute entity. So because of this reason, you cannot see self at hmm? So another nubhasana can remove perception of other. A nature nubhasana can remove perception of I conceive. Dukkha hmm? nubhasana can remove the perception of mind. This is craving. Hmm? And this is my property. This is my property. This is my property. In this way you accumulate. Because you have attachment. So this attachment will disappear. Dukkha nubhasana can remove craving. Another nubhasana can remove other perception. Dukkha nubhasana can remove uh, perception of mind craving. Eh? The nature nubhasana can remove conceit. Hmm? So, because of this reason, if you contemplate five aggregates as well as inside knowledge as nature, dukkha, another, then craving in wrong view will disappear. Craving in wrong view will disappear. And the, this is the present. So, asan hira, asan koba. Craving in wrong view cannot overcome this insight knowledge as well as these five aggregates. Hmm? If you contemplate them as nature, dukkha, nada, you can overcome the craving in wrong view on these five aggregates as well as on this insight knowledge. This is. If if you want to remove this this try, craving in wrong view, how you must try? You must contemplate these five aggregates as well as inside knowledge as a nature, dukkha and anatta. Do you understand? In the same way, there are five past aggregates. <laughs> Buddha teach not to follow after bus aggregates by craving and taking. This meaning is to be there on bus aggregates, you should not have craving in wrong view. You must remove craving in wrong view. How you should do? You must contemplate bus aggregates also as a nature, dukkha, and another. If you contemplate bus aggregates as a nature, dukkha, and another, this craving in wrong view cannot arise. Depending on first aggregates. In the same way, there are future five aggregates. You have many expectations, hopes hmm, for future five aggregates. These are the craving in wrong view. If you want to destroy this craving in wrong view, how you should try? You must contemplate future aggregates also as a nature, dukkha, and another. If you contemplate this, Future aggregates as nature, dukkha, and another, then perception of uh, the craving in wrong view will be disappear. So, past aggregate, present aggregate, future aggregate, there are three. <coughs> three types. <coughs> so, whether this is past aggregate or present aggregate or future aggregate, if you contemplate them as nature, dukkha, and another, then Craving in wrong view will disappear. This is same minute only, but now it is many, uh, many, many <coughs> Mahadiras, they translate this stanza as Didananagamaya, you must not follow after the past aggregates. Then they translate, you should, you must not contemplate past aggregates, in this way they translate. And then you must also you should not expect for future existence or for future aggregates. They translate this also, you should not contemplate future aggregates. Then in present also Buddha says, depending on present five aggregates, you should not have craving in wrong view. How you should do? You must not contemplate them. <laughs> if you want to remove craving in wrong view, depending on present aggregates, then you must pre, pre, you must contemplate present five aggregates as nature to Kanada. In the same way, if you want to remove craving in wrong view depending on past aggregates, 
then you must contemplate bus aggregates as an to another. In the same way, if you want to remove craving and wrong view, depending on future aggregates, then you should also contemplate future aggregates as an to another. This is a very clear meaning. So, if they translate, you must not contemplate past, you must not contemplate future, then the very origination will be meaningless. Because past causes produce present effect. Present causes will produce future effect. Then you will not understand the noble truth of the origin of Toka, Smuriya Sitya. How you can understand? So, the object of this insight knowledge is number one, the noble truth of suffering, Toka Sitya. Number two, the noble truth of the origin of suffering, Smuriya Sitya. These two types of Sitya Dhammas are the object of Vipassana. Mm. These two types of Dhammas are called formations Sankara. These Sankaras are the object of Vipassana. You must contemplate these Sankaras as nature, Dhoka, and Ananda. Because in the beginning of hmm, my Dhamma talk, I had been explained one type of Sogda, one Sogda, Aswakya Sogda, the destruction of things. Hmm? The destruction of things comes about for one who knows and sees. So that the destruction of things is means for one means who knows and sees means what for what knows and sees. For one who knows and sees, this is the noble truth of suffering. For one who knows and sees, this is the noble truth of the origin of suffering. For one who knows and sees, this is the noble truth of the cessation of suffering. For one who knows and sees, this is the noble truth of the path leading to the cessation of suffering. Then the, 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 the destruction of the days comes about. So, the destruction of the taste means to attain hardship only. Arhapa improves knowledge which realizes Nibbana. Then that's trying the taste completely without Ramayana. So, if they do not understand or do not know and see the noble truth of the suffering as well as the noble truth of the origin of suffering, they cannot be arha. They cannot can destroy the days or the phenomena. The destruction of the days or the phenomena is for one who knows and sees these four noble truths only. If they do not understand these four noble truths, they cannot be sodabana, they cannot be sagadagami, they cannot be anagami, they cannot be arha. If they cannot become arha, they cannot destroy these developments. So, to become noble ones, they must understand with direct knowledge these four noble truths. Among four noble truths, past aggregate, past aggregate also include, present past aggregate also include, future past aggregates also include. Internal fat aggregates, external fat aggregates also include, all are include. In the same way, among past fat aggregates, past causes are also include. Include means past causes arise depending on past fat aggregates only. In the present, now here, fat aggregates. Depending on these fat aggregates, present fat aggregates, you accumulate fat causes. Ouija, ignorance, tenna, craving, Ubadana, clinging, eh? Sankara formations, eh? Karmic force, karma. These five causes arise depending on present. Present five causes arise depending on present five aggregates. In the same way, past five causes also arise depending on past five aggregates only. No present five aggregates. Hmm? In the same way, 
future causes or future five causes also will arise to be among future five aggregates only. Without understanding <coughs> or without discerning past aggregates, past five aggregates, you cannot understand five past causes with your direct knowledge. In the same way, without discerning future five aggregates, you cannot understand future five causes with your direct knowledge because you can you cannot discern. So without discerning past causes and past aggregates, one cannot understand the noble truth of the origin of suffering. Without understanding the noble truth of the origin of suffering, one cannot realize nibbana. So for realization of nibbana, <coughs> you must try number one to understand with your direct knowledge the noble truth of the suffering. This is by killing aggregates. So then number two, you should try to understand with your direct knowledge the noble truth of the origin of suffering. This is dependent origination. So these two noble truths are the object of the personal insight. If you can contemplate them as nature to another systematically, one day when your insight becomes mature, your part in approaching knowledge will realize nirvana stage by stage. Last part in approaching knowledge is called arham part in approaching knowledge. That arham part knowledge will destroy the phenomena completely without remainder. At that time, the destruction of things will appear. <coughs> so, in this Padega Radha Sutta, one is a single example of Sutta. Buddha never said not to contemplate past aggregates and future aggregates. Buddha says you must not follow after to be follow after with craving and around you, past aggregates. You must not expect future aggregates with craving in wrong view. You must try not to arise craving in wrong view depending on present aggregates. Only this way about that thought. So because of this reason, depending on past aggregates or present aggregates or future aggregates, if there is craving in wrong view, then you must contemplate these past aggregates, present aggregates, future aggregates as nature to another to remove this craving and wrong view only. This is one. So if you can contemplate these past five aggregates, present five aggregates, future five aggregates, and then five aggregates, is then five aggregates as nature to another. Again, you must also contemplate that nature inside knowledge as a nature to another again. Because depending on this nature or this inside knowledge, sometimes you may have craving in wrong view. Because of this reason, not to rise depending on inside knowledge, craving in wrong view, we must you must contemplate this inside knowledge also as a nature to another. What is inside knowledge? According to Buddha's teaching, inside knowledge rests as a cognitive process. Mind or cognitive process. Number one is mind or adapting consciousness. There are twelve mental factors. Hmm? <coughs> Seven impulsions join us. In each jivana, there are thirty-four mental factors, usually. Hmm? I had been calculated that before, hmm? this thirty-four. So, this among this study for insight knowledge is also present. That insight knowledge is predominant factor when you are contemplating these formations as nature to another. So predominant factor is insight knowledge, but that insight knowledge cannot rise alone. Single. It rises always with associated mental formations. All together these mental formations you must contemplate them as nature to another. This inside knowledge. So this inside knowledge together with associated mental formations, you must contemplate as nature to another. If you contemplate then 
Thus, inside knowledge cannot be destroyed or cannot be overcome by craving and pleasure. This is one meaning. Another meaning is nirvana. <laughs> Another meaning is nirvana. While they are contemplating nature, dukkha, nanda in this way, one day they may, their insight become mature. When their insight become mature, at the end of insight knowledge, part and fruition knowledge will arise. Part and fruition knowledge which realize nirvana will arise. Eh? That part knowledge and fruition knowledge realize nirvana. After realizing nirvana again, you must try to attain fruition knowledge again and again. Fruition attainment. Fruition attainment again and again. Fruition attainment means after part knowledge, fruition knowledge appear. That fruition knowledge can realize nirvana. In that nirvana, there is no mentality, no materiality. This is object. Hmm? But here, but in fruition knowledge, which take nirvana as object, here, but knowledge, there are that, usually 37 medal from Pedas. Fruition knowledge also saying there are 37 medal of Pedas. This 37 medal of Pedas means when you are contemplating Fajr Nadamas, for example, huh? as Nisha Dukkha Nadam, and that if you realize Nirvana, then your part in fruition knowledge is associated with 37 Madhala Fadas. 34 flat plus Sama Vacha, Sama Gamada, Sama Ajiva, huh? 3. Right speech, right action, and right livelihood. 34 and these 3 together, all mm -hmm. together, there are 37 Madhala Fadas. So, <coughs> in this case, asa hira, asa gopa, dawi dawi lupi hiri. That fruition endemic, you must again, again try. Again, again try that fruition endemic. Because in the nibbana, the object of fruition endemic is nibbana. In that nibbana, there is no mentality, no materiality. Because of this reason, there is also no craving, no raw view. Because <coughs> craving and raw view is one type of, two type of mentality. Hmm? So, if there is completely no mentality, mentality, then craving and raw view cannot be present in Nibbana. So, if you do in this way again, again, then that crucial knowledge, hmm? craving and Clinging cannot overcome this fruition knowledge or this nibbana. So, not to overcome by craving and clinging, you must try again and again that fruition and This is another meaning. So, in that sutta, Buddha explained only to contemplate past, present, and future aggregates. As nature took another, not to rise, craving and clinging only. Buddha never say two different words, two different teachings. You may understand. Second Samu, another Lakana Sutta. Five bhikkhus, hmm? five group of bhikkhus, Pichawagi bhikkhus. They contemplate these five, 11 types of five aggregates, past, present, future, internet, internet, cross, and central, empiria, and superior, power, and near. <coughs> these 11 types of five aggregates, they contemplate as nature, dogma, and nada. Again, again. After that, a day of Sodapana. One day, they are inside become medieval, and then Buddha teach Nada Lakana Soda. When he is teaching Nada Lakana Soda, Nearly at the end, he asked them questions. Whether this materiality is nature or nature. They give, they reply, when the rivers are nature. So here Buddha says, material aggregate in the same way, feeling, perception, formations, and consciousness, five aggregates. Hmm? These five aggregates are nature or nature. They reply as nature. You should try and do see. Buddha never tell lies. <laughs> so, 
In the same way, these five aggregate, these, these five group of vehicles also will never tell life. Because <coughs> at the end of this summer, they will realize or they will become rahas. So because of this reason, at the time, they see these five aggregates. This is, they also see these five aggregates in nature. They also understand by their direct knowledge at the time. Because they already at the Sodhavana stage. If they begin Sodhavana, <coughs> They already understand the no virtue of suffering. This is five aggregates. Mm. So because of this reason, <coughs> Buddha, when Buddha asks, they reply nature. Whether these five aggregates are nature or nature, they reply as nature. Then, if it is nature, this is dukkha or sukha. Uh, when I remember, so this is dukkha. If it is nature, dukkha, then this is also always changing. Always changing means from Obada stage to Pinga, from rising stage to dissolution stage. Always changing. Then you can say this is my other, no, 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 sir. And this will be reply. <coughs> After this question and answer, Buddha gave the instruction how to contemplate Vipassana. That samadhi ha bhikkhuwe yangi chi rumba di da nagata bishopana ija dhamma bhi dhamma olari gama sukuma wa hina wa bani dhamma yandure sadi gewa sabha rumba ni dhamma ma ni soha ma sami na me so adhani iwa mi daya tabuda sama binaya tataba. And this is Buddha inside. Yangi chi rumba di da nagata bishopana di da pas nagata chucha bishopana present. These five aggregates are the same, hmm? both are kept in session. So, first five aggregates, present five aggregates, future five aggregates, internal five aggregates, external five aggregates, gross five aggregates, sudden five aggregates, inferior five aggregates, superior five aggregates, far five aggregates, near five aggregates. For eleven types of five aggregates, you should contemplate them as nature to another. This is not mine, this is not I, this is not myself. This is saying Adicca Toka Ananda. So, in the result that Buddha openly explained to contemplate past five aggregates as Adicca Toka Ananda, future five aggregates as Adicca Toka Ananda, present five aggregates as Adicca Toka Ananda. So, in that result that Buddha explained openly, such a Buddha, why in that Bandhigarada Soda, one who has a single excellent night, how oh, Buddha can teach? You must not contemplate past five aggregates. You must not contemplate future five aggregates. Buddha never tell two different words. So you should understand this well. Mm -hmm. But another <coughs> problem I want to explain here. Uh, maybe four or five days ago I explain about Buenga. Hmm? But I forget. Another type of point that I do not explain. This is there are many misunderstandings. <coughs> While mm. they are practicing mm. samatha or vipassana, when their concentration is not yet mature, especially in excess concentration stage, boinga rise, mind state rise. <coughs> For beginners, when this boinga mind state rise, huh? on that day I had explained. A shock, fear, fear, fear arise. Hmm? But another type of problem also there. In the same way, when they are contemplating Vipassana, and that they also, when they reach Sikharupaka Jnana stage, hmm? the knowledge of equanimity towards formations, and that they also, they have a, lo a lot of equanimous mind to every formation. They don't care anything. They have no attachment, they have no longing, no expectation. All equanimous men, and then they also, if they cannot maintain their concentration, they can easily fall down when that. So at that time, this is also another problem. <coughs> but I want to explain here, when they fall into Buenga, some meditators, they think, this may be cessation state. Or Nibbana. Hmm? Why? 
Other than they feel some meditators feel, especially some other meditators, because they do not understand argument, mentality, mentality, and their causes. So other than they understand this mind state, if the, this mind state arises successfully for a long time, they think, oh, they, they know nothing other than they feel like that. They know nothing means this mind state do not take present object, for example, like Anabana Bribhaga Nimita. That mind state do not take this present object, but that mind state take only past object. Past object means past, in past, past, like, past, past, like, in the end of death. One Nimita, one side, hmm? Kama, or Kama Nimita, or Gri Nimita. Kama means also Kama. Kama Nimita means the sign of Kama. Gri Nimita means destination, sign of destination. This one of these three objects usually appear. That Moenga may say take that object. But that Moenga may say take that object. Who understand? When they discern the very origination of the past past life, and then that only they understand clearly. This Moenga may say realize past object only. But Especially when they cannot analyze ultimate mentality and materiality, or when they cannot discern ultimate mentality and materiality, they do not understand that point of mastery. How many mental factors are there? They do not understand. Because they do not yet discern ultimate mentality and materiality. This is one reason. Another reason is they never discern dependent origination. So this argument, mentality, mentality are five aggregates and other words. Huh? Same. Five aggregates and uh, mentality means four mental aggregates. So this argument, mentality, mentality, and their causes, especially dependent origination, these two noble truths are the object of vipassana. Many meditators, they think, oh, some of us, disciples of Buddha, cannot see this argument mentality, mentality. This is their perception. Because of this perception, they do not try, they never try to understand this argument mentality, eh? mentality. But they say they are trying with Vipassana. They may say only. <coughs> they, they believe first is finished, left behind. So it is not necessary to deserve first to contemplate past. Future is not yet reached. Hmm? Not has yet, not have yet reached. So because of this reason, it is not necessary to contemplate future. Only present. If they present, practice present only. Number one, they do not understand alibi mentality, mentality, and present. Number two, they do not practice to understand dependent origination. So they do not know the noble truth of suffering, then the noble truth of the origin of suffering. These two are the object of insight knowledge. Without understanding these two types of noble truth, if they contemplate, uh, if they try vipassana, their vipassana is only just superficial. So, <coughs> other than when they practice anyway, hmm? usually some attack maybe, hmm? When they practice at the day, usually they fall into Buddha. But at the day, if they practice again, again, at the beginning stage only maybe they may shook a little bit. But later, if they try again, again, then they can maintain this Buddha mindset for a long time. <coughs> one example, I will show you one in Bama, one Mahathira. He thinks, one day we will die. If we die, we will not breathe. Hmm? So there will be no. So lying down, lying flat. Hmm? He try not to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> he do not understand ultimate mentality, materiality. He do not understand dependent origination. Just lying down, he, do, he try not to breathe. Oh, they hope he forgot. He can say this when God mistake about 48 hours, 
Two days. Completely. <laughs> he can stay and that stay. Because he practiced again, again. But he may say, at that time he knows nothing. Of. Because he do not understand animal mentality, materiality. He do not understand the object and subject. So because of this reason, his perception is this is real nirvana. <laughs> but later, slowly, when he became older and older, he understands this is nothing. <laughs> so he, he admits this is wrong view, he admits later. In the same way, there are many meditators, when they are practicing any commentana or any meditation subject, so that when their concentration a little bit improved, this, they may usually fall into Buenga. If they can maintain this Buenga and they practice again, again they can maintain this Buenga mostly for a long time. They think this is Nibbana. So if they realize Nibbana, it is not necessary to this ultimate mentality, mentality, this is very difficult. <laughs> <They reject. laughs> it is not necessary to win origination. This is not necessary because they realize Nibbana. So in this way they make them. So this is another way of misunderstanding of Pohanga. Okay, today I only stop here. Okay. Any question you can ask. Is it impossible for people to spontaneously end up in a state of nirvana who have uh, no training? Are there yeah. cases of that? Yes, one so that. Hmm? Uh -huh. uh, Sayuda Nigaya, you can see this so that. Eh? I will recite this so that. Sabha Vigwe Navi Jana Avri Jana Avira Jaya Avijaha Avavodu Kakiaya. It is impossible. To realize Nibbana, which is the end of suffering. Hmm? Without understanding, ultimate mentality, materiality, by three types of insight knowledge. Three types of insight knowledge is maybe eleven, uh, the Vipassana insight or Vipassana insight knowledge only. So, if you do not understand ultimate mentality, materiality, and their causes as nature to go another, you cannot realize Nibbana, which is the end of Safari. This is called Avri Janana Sada in Sayuda Nikaya. No question? <laughs> <laughs> I um, have a, it's probably a simple minded question. Is the knowledge that one is still breathing, mm. currently still breathing, is that a test that would suggest that you have not fallen into um, a Bhavanga state? Yes, yes. So if you... Okay. Yes, because when you are sleeping soundly, mm. without dreaming, other than when you are successfully rising and passing away, mm. other than you are breathing, the meaning is when that message came, produce breathing. So you you contemplate the in, the insight knowledge as you anicca dukkha anatta, and then you see that, and then you contemplate that that knowledge as also. Yes, maybe up to 10th, 10th, you can try. Up to 10th, for example, the, this is five aggregate. Yes. Hmm? These five aggregates you must contemplate as nature, dukkha, and that. That number one inside knowledge. That inside knowledge also you must think contemplate as nature, dukkha, and that. Then that second, second knowledge, that inside knowledge also again you must contemplate nature, dukkha. Yes. That concept, inside knowledge, also you must go to that, 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 that. So up to ten states. Okay. So it must become very quick. Very quick. Quick, quick imagine and contemplate this. So up to ten, you can do. But more than ten is not necessary too much. Because there are many 
commissions you must contemplate as any chapter of that matter. Aruba Sadaga Mentality Subject Session and we saw the Mega the Bagabi previously and you can see this way of practice. No question? Which can be for maybe it 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 means in the context of Vipassana, uh, would you explain but how to understand the the meaning of uh inside knowledge? Maybe they are translation only. In Pali this is called Vipassana Jnana. Vipassana Jnana 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 means which can faculty. Muslim faculty alone cannot rise because this is nature in Vidama. Muslim faculty arise with associated mental formations only. When they arise with associated mental formations, they arise abounding to cognitive process only. Cognitive process means here mind or cognitive process. Number one, mind or advising consciousness. Then seven impulsions usually jhavanas. In each jhavana, my moment there are 34 mental factors. Among 34, wisdom faculty is predominant factor in vipassana. But if you already had been tested on the mentality internally and externally, other than if you contemplate your inside knowledge, then you can easily understand. But at the beginning stage, of Nama Rupa Prachita, eh? analyze it, mentality and eh? body reality. At inside knowledge state, also we teach this usually for higher vipassana. For example, your yeah, untransparent element. You must pay attention this is untransparent element. At inside knowledge, also you must try to discern. Then in this untransparent is Chakubhusara. That knowledge which knows this is Chakubhusara, that inside knowledge also you must discern. Okay? The untransformed element, as soon as it has it pass away, so it is a nature. That nature inside knowledge also you must discern. Okay? In this way, you dis then you must contemplate and discern. This is always operates by rising in passing way. This is Dhoka. That Dhoka inside knowledge also you must discern. Then there is no permanent substance in that untransformed element. So this is another. That another inside knowledge also you must discern. There is there are many impurities surrounding. <laughs> I transfer element always associated with bad smell, eh? but uh, bad smell and bad color, etc. No sweet smell. <laughs> <laughs> so th because of this, and this is asuba hmm? impure. That inside knowledge also you must again discern. In this way, at the beginning only, while you are discerning ultimate mentality, we teach this sutra. Because when they reach Vipassana, they must also contemplate this inside knowledge again okay, as nature talk another. And what's the um, the uh, the object? So why is the superior point of the uh, the the process of Maybe if you understand, if you had to be already understand, there are six two cognitive process. I do cognitive process, I do not do, do, do body do, and my do. My do cognitive process can contemplate this as nature to another. That my do cognitive process arises depending on your heart base. Taking this eye transference as nature, nature, or dukkha nature, or ananda nature, or asuba nature. That nature, this mind or cognitive process, okay, this untransparent elements, nature, nature, dukkha, nature. That mind or cognitive process, again, okay, you must decide here. Yeah. Yeah, but 
if you can this uh, a dimmer mentality barely you will understand but if you do not yet this uh, a dimmer mentality other than maybe just imagination what is meant by conformity knowledge that that stage in vipassana maybe this is last stage oh. last stage is means after sankarubaka huh? mm -hmm. sankarubaka knowledge huh? the knowledge of equanimity dual formations become mejua and mejua and then the nearly but knowledge will arise and then the, this conformity knowledge appear because this is confirmed previous inside knowledge as well as coming but knowledge this is china oh. and the middle so this is confirmed this also this also but for so they were huh? not to clash not each to other not to clash yes. each other if the inside knowledge contemplate as nature then this also contemplate as nature oh. and then part knowledge also will be at the end of nature knowledge. If this is contemplate Toka, then this will be also Toka, and part knowledge also will understand Toka nature in this way. Well, this, uh, in our practice, um, most of us are trying either to get the nimitta or, or, or trying to work out a jhana, reach a jhana. So uh, we cannot we cannot do any of those uh, processes that you are describing uh, yes. right now because we have to keep What's except it? for maybe the bhavanga. Mm. But my right? also maybe previously I had been explained. Now you are understanding only when my domain this is metaphorically only. Yes. So when my says produce, my produce medirati, small kalapas, uncountable kalapas. The light of this uncountable kalapas, now you can see. In the, in the same way, urija kalapas. Hmm? Hmm. But, after this sunny argument, materiality, if you go to this argument, materiality, you can easily understand. When the understanding Adhimi Medirati, if you practice to this <coughs> Adhimi Medirati, it will be very difficult, except Janadimas. Janadimas are easy for why? Because when they are practicing Samatha Chana, <coughs> other than they can easily discern five Chana Fetas. So this is the beginning stage. If you can discern five Chana Fetas, the five Chana Fetas can arise only five. They arise with associated mental formations. They are the different mental formations. If you write this again and again, then you can understand this study. <coughs> After that, you should go back. This study will arise depending on what? Or it arises depending on heart rate. You will understand. What heart rate is what? Then if you gain this some four elements in your heart, then you will see small body gas. If you analyze this more body gas, you can see like this. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you can see the 34 uh, factors uh, one by one, <coughs> eventually? Maybe for beginners, usually we teach one by one. Because they are inside is not yet mature. Huh? So one by one, if they can this uh, one by one, then usually, usually we teach two, 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 then three, 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 then four, 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 four then five, five, five. Five, maybe one city we teach. Then after the next city, up to eight we teach. Then after the next city, slowly increase up to thirty. Then next city we teach all, all together thirty four. Slowly we, we must increase. Now you are designing China Pedas. At the beginning, you must design only Hudega. If you can design Hudega thoroughly, then next time. You can design which are. So slowly, one by one. If you can design one by one, then please try fight together. Then you can see clearly fight together. Okay. In the same way. Only.
I remember right, uh, in Anattarakana Sutta, when the Buddha preached it, it says in the book, the monks were not delighted. No, 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 so that one, so that one, Mula Briya, yes, so Mula. Mula. No, delighted means these listeners are 500 bhikkhus. Hmm? Mm. These 500 bhikkhus are a lot of mana kosit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because they are Brahmins. Hmm? Mm. They are landed Brahmins. They have a lot of sharp wisdom. Whenever Buddha taught any Dhamma, only once they can memorize all. So because of this reason, <laughs> oh, not difficult, his tamas. Very easy, we can learn easily. In this way, they do not be respect to the mm -hmm. Buddha. Mm -hmm. But one day, Buddha trying to see their inner quality. Buddha saw, oh, they can be the rahas. But without removing this conceit, mana, they cannot add the rahasya. But if they can remove this conceit, mana, then they can add the rahasya. So Buddha. Because of this reason, Buddha, and, uh, Buddha preached Mula Priyaya Sutta. After listening to Mula Priyaya Sutta, they do not understand the Dhamma. <laughs> <laughs> so they are, at the day, they are conceived a little bit decreased. At the day, Buddha taught another Jadaka Satori. Jadaka Satori, in one of previous like this, our Bodhisattva Vivek, the teacher, Tisa Pamoka teacher. Hmm? They are 500 disciples. In the same way, they have a lot of sin. <coughs> and then also, our body said that, ask them one question, they cannot answer. <laughs> and then that only, they are conceived and decrease. In the same way, in that soda, Buddha taught, why the Buddha preaching this Mula Briya soda, they are conceived for them. They can remove their conceit. They, they diligent deliberate this vipassana. When they vipassana, when they are vipassana inside become Mejua, one day in Vesali. Sado, Vizagas is found there. In some tradition, he's taught that this absorption on this found the mind state should be cultivated by the Bodhisattva at the point at which he attains Sankara Upekanyana and doesn't wish to enter into Nibbana. So that upon death, they call this Rigpa, yeah? he can recognize this state at death and therefore bring to mind whatever his intention is for his rebirth. Um, Bodhisattvas are not like that. What is that does always contemplate Adhima, Mandaraji, Madhiraji, as an agent of Ananda, Abhidhusankha, Rupa, Kanyana states. But now this Vinga may state, they do not contemplate Adhima, Mandaraji, Madhiraji, really. Yeah, but once they have attained Sankara, Rupa, Kanyana, they don't Maybe wish to go. Maybe I want to explain this. <coughs> if they don't want to go to beyond Sankara, Rupa, Kanyana states, mm -hmm. what have been? I had been experienced many meditators. They had have been is they are wish for some in Yudha Jnana. That wishing for some in Yudha Jnana appear in the day. Okay. Because of this reason, they have no desire to go. They want to become Buddha only. To be Buddha, that desire, what desire? Especially if they gain hmm? definite prophecy near that Bhyadita in previous one of Buddha's time. That image appear again and again. When they are inside Bhikkhan Mijuba. So they do not stay in Bhikkhan Mijuba. This is only Buddha taught in Adida Briya so that This is Vonshya. Vonshya means who cannot take any paragane. What called in English? Anyone. Any woman who cannot take any paragane. Sterile, huh? infertile, cannot have infertile. child? No child, no child. Infertile, infertile. 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 cannot uh, yes, reproduce. Yes. This is called <coughs> Wanchia, that, like Wanchia. Wanchia cannot produce any children. In the same way, this mind also cannot produce any result. This is useless mind. But Buddha says, 
instead of thinking different unwholesome and thinking unwholesome thoughts, discuss, discussive thoughts. If you stay in Bhuvanga, it is Buddha. In this way, also Buddha thought. <laughs> if you think, think to kill mother, father, etc., instead of such thinking, if you stay in Bhuvanga, it will be better. In this way, Buddha also thought. But it is one chair, cannot produce any good or bad result. So this is only useless mind only. Useless mind means cannot produce any good result, higher good result. But is our goal to stop producing results? Hmm? Our goal is to stop producing results without no mind. Produce. If it is going to be no produce. But that's good. Because no we don't go, want no to go. Maybe carbon. body said there's always much accumulate barmies. These barmies are for serving you that nana only. To make make you are serving you that nana. You must do this parmis in every moment, every like every existence. So <coughs> with the accumulating parmi they are staying in Bhuanga, it will be useless for them. Maybe sometimes. <laughs> <coughs> in um, last night's uh, Dhamma talk, talking about the difference between um, Mahayana and Theravada with conditioned and nibbana. This is Theravadan view. The Mahayana, which is that, um, that the unconditioned is responsible for the conditioned. In other words, uh, nibbana is samsara, samsara is nibbana. I, I had heard this said before, not last night. Is, could you perhaps talk a little bit about? Maybe. I <laughs> <laughs> do not understand about Mahayana. <laughs> so I cannot say, is it me, but I heard Piwale. <laughs> but what is Piwale? Maybe some Mahayana Mahatiras, they also practice Samantha. Mm. Or maybe partially we both know, but I don't know, is it me. But there is Samantha also powerful, they will see some mentions and things. So especially in our Tiravara Buddhism, there is one interesting point, is pure ebo. Pure ebo means the Sutta Vasa. Sutta Vasa means, Sutta is pure persons. Pure means only Nagami and Arahat. They can stay in that five place. Occasionally, for the long day, there are no Buddhas. Maybe their lifespan is only eighty, eighty thousand. I think so. Eighty thousand aeons only. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So because of this reason, many aeons Buddha never appear. There are no Brahmas. They have this plane bigger, empty that pure about bigger empty. So they may see this pure about and then so when they are some other inside become you know, very powerful. That pure about and they may misunderstand and they pure oh, next. <laughs> because this is a very pure. Mm. <laughs> I think so only but I do not understand Mahayana India completely. <laughs> But Nibbana, Nibbana is, is very different. Very different means, he, they may see here, maybe, for example, uh, missions, small, um, very big gates. Then Brahmas are very big. Brahmas, very, their body is very big. Their missions are very big. Not like this meditation hall. <laughs> 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 because, <coughs> for example, Kedigara, huh? Kedigara, Kedigara is one of the disciples of Kasvat Buddha. Mm. He is friend of our Bodhisattva in Kasvat Buddha's time. So he always looked down his friend, Sujodhi Bala, one day will be a Buddha. When, he, when will he renounce? He always waiting about see. One day our Bodhisattva renounced last night. Mm. Then when he reached a normal beach, mm. he offered ropes. Do you remember? 
that story. Yeah. Rocks and yeah. mm. rocks and uh, balls. Mm. So that can be gara. When our body is under, raise up his what call? Outer clothes. What call? Mm. Mm. Yeah, lower lower clothes. Mm. And this again, if I really will be Buddha, this cloth not fall down to the ground. Then he raised up. You should also try. Cloth <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. never go down. Then that Kadigara take this cloth up to his Brahmawa. He do one type of Jiviya. Twelve Yojana. One Yojana may be eight miles or ten miles or twelve miles. Twelve Yojana may be more than hundred miles. Height is more than 100 mm-hmm. miles. The diameter, what about? Mm-hmm. Maybe mm-hmm. Uh, 100, more than 100 mm-hmm. miles. Yeah. So how big you will understand? This is made of seven types of jewels only, no bricks, <laughs> <laughs> no stones. So how big maybe? This is his donation. He can donate such a pagoda and the Brahma one. Mm-hmm. So their machines may be bigger than like. So they may see and then so, but I'm not sure. Okay, today let that stop. Oh, sharing merit. Okay, that's a nice one. Okay, repeat. Idem, Ponya. Asavakya, Maha Hotu, Idame Bonya, Idame Bonya, Neba Nasa, Neba Nasa, Pacheo, Pacheo, Hotu, Idame Bonya, Idame Bonya, Saba Sadana, Saba Sadana, Pajima. Ajema, Tisabe, Tisabe, Mesama, Mesama, Punya Baga, Punya Baga, Labandu, Labandu, Sadu, Sadu, Sadu.